what's up guys, Steven Tillman here and thanks for joining me again today for a tutorial of how to shoot real estate photography. Here we are in Lightroom, so we're doing our basic adjustments. These two, as you can see that the, the orange and stuff, it's, I call it light pollution. It's from orange of the lights and it's the white balance. In my camera settings, I always have the white balance at auto. That way it can detect, try to detect when you're in a room with the orange lights and then detect when you pop off the flash, it'll make it look more natural. So here I have uh, 130th of a second, F6.3, ISO 400. Now, the reason I had it at 30th of a second was because the light outside was so bright. So I dumbed it down a little bit to where then I could do a flash and pop it off and get the natural wall color. So I'm going between these two, get my little dropper right here, where it looks really orange. Do that, okay, now you have, let's bring up some brightness a little bit. Just go back and forth between. If you hit your arrow keys, the left and right, and you have, say, like at the bottom here, I have these two highlighted. It'll just toggle back and forth between those two that are selected so that I can easily go back and forth. All right, so see, full bump. This is gonna knock down highlights bring up the shadows. I bring up my whites a little bit because white always makes things look really crisp and clean. Uh, bring my blacks back down, which is gonna bring in some contrast a little bit from when I bring my shadows up. You don't want it to look flat, so I bring my blacks down just a little bit. And like always, play with these just to see what it looks like. Bring it up. If you want a flatter image, that's fine. It's up to you. But you can bring it down. It just gives it a little more depth and separation from the background. And so. Go to the other one. This one looks terrible. So let's, let's bring up, I probably should have did it maybe a little brighter, but the window was so terrible coming in. So what I'm looking at here, usually the peak up here, I wanted to be right in the histogram, but if I look right here, this is a lot of where it's at the right of the histogram and I'm seeing what I want to see in the photo. So just kind of get those running side by side. So let's go back and forth. This one, I'm looking at the walls. Walls are very important. Okay, so I can see that it has a little bit of blue, especially on the floor. So let's knock down some blue. It's got some orange and yellow. Usually when you have color cast on the walls and it's looking really orange or yellow, it is a, if it's looking orange, usually bring down the orange and yellow and it will help out quite a bit. But if you have wood on the floors or on the, uh, the desktop right here, you don't want to bring too much orange out because in your blending modes later when you have normal and you need to bring color back in, if it's looking nasty with the luminosity mask and blending mode, you're going to need that orange color to bring it back in and make it look natural. If we go to this one, you can see how the walls look. It's almost like a very, very light mint color, a little, but two, on this one, you have the green that we can't see in this photo, but the green from the grass on the outside also coming in and putting a color cast. So you have a lot of colors that you're trying to get out of the photo. So usually the green and the aqua, it'll bring it down just a little bit. So that one actually had to go quite a bit. Maybe I could take a little bit of orange out of this one, a little bit of yellow out of this one. It's looking very terrible, but that's okay. What I'm looking for is if, not, if there's not any crazy colors, because most likely this is gonna blend in pretty good uh, in the Photoshop area. So here's a window pool, great window pool. You see the sky looks really blue, which we can actually make that a little more blue. Bring that blue out just a little more by bringing the saturation up. Uh, out here, there, you can see the neighbors, their houses. Bring the highlights down just a little bit to bring a little more definition in that window. And then you have this one right here, which is my, whoops, photo, the safety photo. Don't really need it. There was no reflections. There's no weird stuff going on in the windows. It was a pretty good window pool. It was a beautiful day outside, so it made my life very easy. All right, so right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. As this is opening up in Photoshop, I wanna remind you when you are at the property, you want to do your brightest shot first, which is always gonna be your ambient. 
then your next shot's where you die down, where you set your shutter speed faster to kill the ambient, and then you pop your flash off on the white ceiling, a reflector, whatever you have to use, and then your window pool, and then exact same exposure for your window pool for your safety shot, just in case you have any reflections that maybe you didn't see when you get back home, which happens more often than you want it to. All right, so shift and click, and that will highlight all of these. Go up to edit, auto align layers, make sure this first auto is selected, and boom. All right. Now, if you click off to the side over here, it will select the top one. Option or alt, click layer mask, and you hide it, command J. You're making a copy of this so that then your, your flash is revealed. All right, B for brush, shift two, will put your flow at 20%. Every number key at the top of your keypad, if you push shift and that number, it will make it go to that whole number. So shift one will be 10, shift two will be 20, shift three will be 30. See, so watch. One, shift two, shift three, four, five, and six. So I like 20. I usually have a, a large number of photos, especially if I have multiple jobs during the day. So I'm trying to get done quick. So having it at five or 10% doesn't do me any good because I'm trying to spit out photos. Now, remember, the top one, all the way at the bottom, luminosity, blending mode, and the second one is normal. The second one in normal blending mode is kind of like my shot that I do that is uh, windows, the same exposure, exact same exposure, but it is a safety shot. So duplicating the ambient shot <clears throat> and making it, leaving it in normal is my safety layer for the ambient. So if we may have to use it, we may not. Sometimes you don't have to. Sometimes the shadows up here, I don't know if it'll be a problem. I hadn't done this yet, this is the first time. The shadows up here from the flash will make a nasty orange color and you have to go in with your, your normal blending mode on your ambient and fix it. All right, so let's see about this. So we want to reveal, so let's do some revealing. Ooh. See, I, I was editing other stuff today or yesterday. So make sure your hardness is all the way down. You want that to be soft. See that? That is what a hard brush looks like when you're trying to when you're trying to brush over. It'll it's disgusting. But look at the soft one. Now watch. Cover it up. Everything looks soft. All right. So let's see. Shadows are casting back normal again. See that hard orange? Let me zoom in. That hard orange color right there. That is the shadow from the flash and luminosity that is a problem. Let's bring back in some natural shadow over here. Natural shadow right here. And you can see even right here, if you pay close attention, there's kind of, there's a, like a, a line where that shadow was from the flash being popped off up high. And there's a line right there where it's just a little, a little bit of a nasty looking orange, but that's what our ambient layer is for. I mean, our normal blending mode is for. All right, so we're just bringing this in. Let's make it full screen so we can kind of see what we're doing. And sometimes I even like to zoom out a little bit so I can see the whole photo, kind of see where the flash is hitting a little bit. Cause if you're zoomed in too much, then you can't, you'll miss something on the corners. So I like to go in and then uh, kind of look at the detail, look at what I'm doing, and then I, I zoom out and I'll zoom back in. Just, I want to make sure that I don't miss anything. People are paying me good money to do this, and I'm supposed to be a professional, which in my opinion is someone who does something for a living. You're, that's your job, that's your livelihood, you're professional. <clears throat> All right, so, now let's see if there's any, usually it has a lot, a big problem on the white. So let's go 10% on this. And let's do a little bit of a uh, smaller brush. See how that shadow just kind of disappears a little bit? Because it is a, uh, it's not luminosity anymore. And see some of that orange is disappearing too. So it makes it look, now look at back here. See how making it kind of a blue color? But it's taking away that nasty orange shadow. Now, don't freak out about the blue color because once you bring it back in to Lightroom, 
You can take a little bit of that blue out and it's completely fine. So you're getting that shadow, bringing some of the orange back in with the light, with the floor. Make sure that doesn't look flashy. And color's not a bad thing, you just want to be able to control it. So we know that right there, see it's, that's that nasty orange I was talking about. Well now you got a blue, but fear not young one, it will be okay. We will solve that problem back in Lightroom. So don't worry about it right now. Now, light pool, remember, go down here. This is your window pool. Go up here, bring it up to the very top and then change it to darken. Alter option, click a layer mask. Do 90 or 100 percent and watch this this is beautiful so beautiful just right over doesn't matter where you paint look at that because you flashed and you prepared for it look at that <clears throat> now you see how it kind of discolored right here you can push l zoom in but see it it's just reflecting what's outside it's not that big of a deal in my personal opinion, but let's just say that you don't want it. Right, then B, I'm gonna push X to make it go black and cover it back up. Now see, now it looks like just a light reflection instead of a blue reflection. So easy peasy. All right, so we didn't need to use this layer. Look at the windows, look how good that looks. That was a good window pool. Good job, Steve. All right, flatten image. <clears throat> Command save. I use Lightroom and Photoshop. In the description below for 30 days for free, you can try this technique and follow along with your own photos that you've taken. If you're having trouble with little orange spots after popping a flash off, you're having trouble with window pools and you wanna do it how I do it with Lightroom and Photoshop. They go seamlessly together back and forth like it just uploaded here as you can see. Now we're back in Lightroom. And so 30 days free, link in the description. Have it with no obligation. If you don't want it, it's fine. So after edit, let's do this. So this is supposed to adjust my lines problem I have to update it every time now it's good so I'm looking at walls I'm looking anything that's going off like that don't worry about making that straight you worry about right here next to the windows and the walls and the corners you make sure those are what's straight because there's nothing in my personal opinion there's nothing that looks more terrible and less professional than walls that look like this when somebody took a photo it, it looks terrible. That's just real estate photography 101. Now I put the constrained crop on because if I don't and it straightens it up, it will have this little area at the bottom. So if you put constraint on, it will keep it right. Okay, so now remember we had the, the blue problem. Now there's a couple things we can do. We can adjust the temperature. Let's see what it looks like. So see how it makes everything kind of orange instead of pinpointing what we're trying to get rid of. So if you go down to saturation and you have this little dropper right here, just the saturation by pinpointing a color. And do it way up. Okay, so you can tell what color is looking nasty right there and bring it down just a little bit. So all I'm doing is clicking in a certain spot. I'm clicking it and I'm just dragging down and it takes care of it, which is really cool because you don't have to try to figure out exactly what's doing what. Then up here, see it's it's still a little orange, but that's because we have the orange from the light that was reflecting off of there. Pinpoint it, drag it down a little bit. See some a little bit up here, pinpoint it, drag it down a little more, There's some green. This right here, pinpoint it, drag it down. And so now that we've done, look at this curve right here. You know how much time it would have taken if I tried to do that individually for each one of those to figure out what color was what? But because of this little, uh, I don't know what you call it, it looks like a little eyeball, but you click on it when it's lit up like that and it's light gray, you can click anywhere and adjust. And this is the color it's taken out. 
Look at that. And now it looks pretty natural and good. I want to check my, yep. So I've said this on my previous video, I'll put a link up here, but my sharpening, I don't sharpen the entire photo. What I do is I press Alt or Option, click on the masking, and I can see exactly what's being sharpened. So if I'm like this, it's sharpening everything. I don't want it to sharpen everything, I just want it to sharpen the edges. Because the edges is what really matter in a real estate photo. If it looks crisp and clean and sharp and good, great. Now you see here too, talk about this, on my ISO of the outside, let me bring a little blue back in because that sky was too pretty to mess up. Okay, just want to make it a little blue. It's not a big deal. Um, it's a sacrificing of what you want, what you don't want in your photo. Uh, so, this looks clean, it looks neat. It has a little bit of warmth to it. It has some blue outside, you know. And if it's not warm enough, you can always make it just a tad warmer. But I like it kind of that in between. Uh, so, on my window shot here, what I did because it was so bright outside, you can see right here on my original window pool, I went down to 200. And when you have a flash or a trigger attached to your camera to a flash, it will only allow what your camera's max sync speed is, which on the Nikon D850, it is uh, 250, and on some it's 200. But so that's then. So then you have to solve that problem. So don't get frustrated if you're on a site and you're going to 250 shutter speed and it, you're trying to go faster. And you, what is happening? It's because your camera stops it because of the sync speed of your flash. It won't allow anymore. So you, then you have to adjust your ISO. So that's why I went down to 250, and you can see that that really is everything I need. And the white around here was perfect for my window pool. This photo right here, it's sharp, it's clean, there's a little bit of color with not too much color. It's exactly what your agents are looking for. And this will set you apart from the competition and it will put you in the bracket of professional real estate photographer. Thanks for watching. If you haven't yet, hit subscribe, click that like button and the bell notification so you can see every time I put out a new video. Hit the like button.